We know Matt Capucci, the Fox 5 meteorologist. We even know Matt Capucci, the storm chaser. But this morning, we are going to meet Matt Capucci, the author, wisdom, not the only author on Good Day. Matt, the new book is out. It is called Looking Up True Adventures of a Storm Chasing Weather Nerd. Thanks for spending a little time with us this morning. Congrats on the book. Well, thank you so much. I'm really excited. Officially out tomorrow, right? Yes. Okay, fantastic. It'll be available anywhere you get books. Um, it, it just It's in the title, the weather nerd thing. In the publicity material, it says, imagine, a, uh, I'm going to quote this, imagine a very cool weather nerd has just uh, pulled up and yelled, let's go storm chasing out of his custom-built armored storm chasing truck. You, you're fully embracing this whole weather nerd thing, aren't you? Very much so. I think anyone who's ever seen me on TV knows that I geek out probably more than anyone else. I, I don't have the, the crisp, the talking that uh, a lot of news folks have, but what I have is passion, and I am replete with passion. I think anyone who's ever seen me broadcast knows that, you know, there's a storm outside, odds are I'm outside. I was there for the Annapolis tornado, the one in Harvard a couple weeks ago. If I'm working, if I'm not working, it doesn't matter if I'm on the clock. It just means that I'm outside. I'm doing what I love. It still excites you. For those who don't know Matthew's full story, and if you read the book, you'll get it. Uh, Matthew grew up in Massachusetts. He went to Harvard, created his own degree, essentially storm chasing for a degree, which is fantastic, uh, and now has turned that into, into a career. But it all started when you were, you were very little, and yep. you said a lot of people were playing the video games, and you were just like, I want a camera. I want to go out and film yeah. weather phenomenons. What was it, though, that triggered that initially for you? You know, I was like two years old, and I'd watch the anemometer spinning on people's roofs, and I was just so fascinated. I couldn't figure out what made them spin. I watched my first documentary on tornadoes when I was like eight or nine years. Actually, no, earlier, probably five or six years old. At seven, I bought a video camera with my first communion money, and uh, I storm chase around the neighborhood. Of course, Cape Cod, you have next to no real storms, but anytime there was lightning, I'd be out there with my, my shaky camera. And uh, when I was like 13, 14, I had a green felt uh, green screen down in the basement that I sewed from a piece of felt at Joanne's Fabrics. And, uh, you know, I've just been loving it ever since. And it's nice now that, you know, at least I can kind of justify with my career everything I did before that. But you see some of the pictures on the screens. You know, all throughout college, I was storm chasing. And really, any time I can get outside, storm chase. That picture right there is actually my graduation day. I skipped graduation, went out and chased storms in McCook, Nebraska, because anyone can march this with is, a cap and a gown. This was at Harvard? Yep. And you skipped your Harvard graduation to go chase a storm? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> one thing I think that's, that's pretty clear about uh, Matthew is that you, you're able to take your passion, you're able to make something happen. Like the early days in the green screen to what you're doing now. I'm guessing that the first, when you fell in love with weather, the first goal was probably to see a tornado in person, right? Was that one yep. of the first? That was always goal number one. And, and I remember my parents actually banned the word tornado in my house when I was like six, seven, eight years old because I love the weather. I love science. My younger sister, Emily, was petrified. Anytime I'd mention tornado, she'd you know, go nuts. And, and so, understandably, it, it's something that I've kind of cultivated over the years. You wanted but... to run into the storm, and then you did. And after <laughs> Many you times. saw that, then what was next on the bucket list? And do you still have things on the bucket list to check off? I have a huge bucket list. So really, Weather-wise, weather I'm talking about here. Oh, I know they're off your bucket list. <laughs> well, this book really is a product of sort of my, my bucket list thus far. Every adventure in there is one of my storm chases, whether it be flying beneath the northern lights, seeing an eclipse in the Atacama Desert, you know, chasing tornadoes but time and time again. But here's my point, Matt. You're 24 years old, and you've done this already. Like, how do you balance the rest of your life now and, and how do you narrow down because it seems like you're checking things off at a record pace that that does stress me uh, Tucker gave me some good advice he told me to keep adding things because I get worried too that I'll check everything off and uh, I, I got to make sure that there's always more on it but really I wrote this book kind of the same way I approached this job in that my, my goal is twofold. I want to educate, inform, inspire, teach folks something new. Every time I come to work here, I try not to just stand in front of the temperature map or the radar, but I really aim to, to teach folks something about the atmosphere because if they learn something about the atmosphere they didn't know before, that's a vehicle for them to learn more science and learn more in general. You're sharing your knowledge, which is so critically important. Uh, I do have to ask you, and, and I've seen your truck before. Uh, you didn't put a picture of it in the book, but just imagine a pickup truck with like a metal cage around it, and that's what you have. So you're, you're typically out like in the Midwest West somewhere chasing tornadoes and this big truck pulls up. Do people expect you to be the one getting out of that vehicle? Probably not. I don't look like someone who drives a truck to begin with. My friends say I look like a Prius person, which I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little concerned about that, but, you know, I'm decently well-dressed, and I hop out of this truck, and it, it's been beat to, uh, really, be, no pun intended, beat to hail, because I, I've gotten to four or five softball-sized hailstorms. I've lost, like, three windshields, and it's funny because my dad is a, a wicked car person. Like, he loves his vehicle. There's a scratch on Yours it. Yours is functional. It's, yeah. You're I, getting the job done. Uh, my wife drives a Prius, so don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> listen, let me ask you this. Um, this was, obviously, writing the book was a bucket list in itself. Yep. You have the book now. You're 
obviously going to have many more adventures. More books in the future, too? I think so. I think so. I'd like to write a book about my study abroad experience because it was, it's actually something I'd like to turn into a sitcom someday. Fox Entertainment will take that. But I, I have a lot more on the bucket list. Okay, so look for a Matthews a series on Fox next year uh, starring Matthew, probably, because he makes everything else happen. Congratulations, my friend. It's great to talk to you. I encourage people to pick up the book. It's available everywhere tomorrow. It's called Looking Up from Matthew Capucci. Well done. Good job. Matthew you. is Thank a you. sitcom in yes. and of himself. <laughs> yeah. Love Congratulations, uh, author, author I Matthew Capucci. Fellow author from you. I know, I know, but that, that's oh cool. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Marissa, we got to get to her. I know, right? <laughs> Coming up next, a surprise special guest at yesterday's City Open. Plus, why tonight could be your last chance to see Juan Soto in a Nationals uniform. We'll be right back. <laughs>